So let's take a look at how we could look at do this question number six, where we're asked to find the ratio of volumes of two objects, but we're not really told what the objects are in terms of their actual dimensions. We're just given um, a portion of one of the properties of the objects, and in this case, the base areas of these cones um, that are a certain value here. Okay, so let's just quickly sketch what we've got here. So we have two cones, okay, which are supposed to be storage containers. And the idea is that they are similar in, in size. One is smaller than the other, but, they're, but the, the rate or the proportion or the scale from the small to the large, okay, is a certain value, okay? So these are similar um, um, shapes, okay? So what we know is that the, we have a similar shape for the area Okay, and then we have some sort of similarity for the volume. Okay, so we need to just kind of take a step back and think about what is the relationship between um, linear measurements and area and volume. Okay, so we know the following here. We know the area of a cone, of uh, the base of a cone, because that's what we're given here, is essentially going to be a circle. So it's pi r squared. So what does that tell us? That tells us that area is proportional to the square of the radius, okay? That's what that equation is telling us. Um, pi is the constant, but area grows as the square of the radius, okay? And then what about the volume of a cone? Okay, volume of a cone. Now, we aren't given all the dimensions for it, but we know volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared times the height. Now the height and the radius are actually connected together um, because if the radius grows by a certain amount, the height would have to grow by a certain amount. Okay, so in general, what we could say is that volume is proportional to the cube um, of the dimensions. Okay, just like the area is proportional to the square of the dimensions. In this case, we just had one variable r, so we said it's r squared, but we actually do have a cube of a dimension here. We have the r squared times h, okay, which is gonna give us three dimensions, so that means we're, we're essentially having three linear um, factors, three linear measurements multiplied together. Okay, so that's related to the cube of the, to those dimensions. So we could do an equation that sets it up this way. We can say the area of the large, um, base area of the large over the area of the small is equal to um, 1225 all over 900, okay? Now, we could um, reduce this down to a fraction so you can play with, take out a GCF and play with it a little bit and you should see that it comes out to 49 over 36. All right, so that is the ratio of the two objects. Now we do know a couple of things here. We know area is proportional to the radius squared. So we could rewrite this equation. Okay, I'm just gonna use L for R for large and then S for small is equal to the radius of the large object squared all over the radius of the small object squared, okay? And then, but we do know one of these ratios here now. We do know what the area ratio is. It's equal to 49 over 36. Okay, so this allows us to solve for the ratio of the radius for um, the large to small. So we can say the radius of the large over the radius of the small is just equal to the square root of those two terms okay, which is going to be the square root of 49 all over the square root of 36, which is seven over six. Okay, so that's the two um, radius um, ratios. Now we don't know what the radiuses are, but we just know that the ratio between them is seven to six. Okay, so this can lead us to another observation. We can then say the following here, the volume of the large cone all over the volume of the small cone is equal to the cube of the linear dimensions. Well, we do know what those linear dimensions are. We don't know h, but we do know that the ratio of r, the radius, is the large radius and the small radius. 
So we can say that it is equal to the radius of the large all over the radius of the small. But remember, we don't know what the exact number is, but we know it's the, it varies by the cube of those dimensions. So we can say that we take those and then we would cube that. So now we, we can just plug our ratio in, 7 over 6, take the cube to the cube that, um, and you will get 7 times 7 times 7, which is 343, all over 6 times 6 times 6, which is 216. So that is the ratio of the volumes. It is 343 to 216. Now again, it's interesting because we haven't solved for any of the dimensions of these objects, but what we do know by this property, that area varies as the proportion to r squared. Okay, that allowed us to find what the ratio of r would be. And then we do know that volume is the cube of dimensions. Okay, so therefore if we cube that ratio, that will allow us to calculate what the volume of the ratios for the large to small or small to large, depending on, on how you want to put it together. Okay, so the final answer for this question is just going to be a fraction. Okay, um, if we're doing large to small, it'll be 343 over 216.